Today is the date and time for, I think, a settlement conference. Yes. As of the last date, uh, Your Honor, given the plaintiff an opportunity to file a reply to Mr. Kellogg's answer, which got done setting forth um, deficiencies in the answer, um, what I would call uh, admissions in his answer, the most serious of which, uh, Your Honor, is based on um, the revocation of Mr. Kelly's driver's license, which I believe occurred in 2022. He's certainly been driving his car in the community over the last few years, and that violates the statute and the lease and rules and regulations clearly state that a violation of Michigan statute or any other uh, ordinance, local, state, or federal, is grounds for termination of the tenancy. Your Honor, none of that was brought up in the initial complaint back in July. So she hasn't brought up one thing that the original complaint uh, stated. So, you know, I don't, I don't know where the laws come in as far as my license and everything, but... Pardon? I say I don't know where the laws lie as far as I haven't researched anything in the Michigan State statute or or the community uh, guidelines that mentions anything about driver's license. You know, that's because this is the first I've been accused of that. I mean, it's all the first time it was brought up, and that that recently happened, and I don't have to own my car anymore, so. What recently happened? That they, my car was uh, taken away or impounded, not impounded, um, repo. Your Honor, our reply to defendant's answer does set forth the ongoing grounds listed in the original demand for possession, uh, which Mr. Kelly failed to respond to several of those. In his answer, uh, Your Honor, very vague responses to the complaint for possession number one. Two, Mr. Kelly does not respond to the claims that he's part of the law and that he's been disturbing other residents and that he has verbally abused the threat management and their personnel. He doesn't respond to that at all in the complaint or excuse me, in his answer. Uh, he makes no statement in support of his claim of retaliatory eviction. The original demand for possession, Your Honor, does state that we would rely on those being specifically delineated, but it also indicates you know, that we would rely on any other violations um, that he becomes aware of at the time that this demand was issued. The was unaware of ongoing issues with Mr. Kelly not having a driver's license. And so now the plaintiff is aware of those, they are going to be relied upon in this case. How long has it been since you haven't driven a vehicle? I'm getting my license back to the state for quite a while. I don't have any means to get to it. So you haven't been driving for how long? Um, it's probably 2017. So you've not driven a vehicle since that time? Take the fifth on that. Okay. Well, I mean, I got pulled over by, I went to Bush's. I, <clears throat> It was for an emergency. I have a daughter at home that stays with me off and on. And as far as that goes, I got pulled over and slain. Yeah. yeah. I was driving that day just to go to Bush. In August. To get groceries. Yeah. In August, right? Yes, in August. You know, I'm a senior citizen on a fixed income, and it's very hard. To, everybody wants lawyers or money, or, and I just don't have it. You really haven't stated anything here. You say that they're retaliating. You've not stated anything regarding a retaliatory eviction. Well, the, the reason I didn't, well, Your Honor, was because I just, I, I thought that would be brought up in trial. I'd be happy to. No, sir. Well, okay. This, I could, I can talk about it now. I mean, the. the That's uh, not how this works, Mr. Kelly. What do you want me to go through each one, even though they're they're false claims? I mean, I don't know how to do anything else except deny that what they're saying is not true. And the retaliation came the day after uh, Ms. Smith and I got in, in some little scuff on the phone. And the next day, I have a big thing on my on my door saying that I'm going to be evicted. 
there's false allegations there that I can that I can very easily um, prove wrong. In your honor, the Michigan court rules MCR 2.111A require a clear and concise answer. The same rule, subsection D, requires the defendant to state the substance of the matter he's going to rely upon in defending a complaint filed against him. Uh, 2.111F uh, requires defenses to be pleaded. It also indicates that allegations that are addressed are deemed as admitted. Because Mr. Kelly did not specifically he doesn't make any specific statements at all regarding claims against him. Again, a vague assertion that they're false, but how are they false? I can present evidence and all of that. If you give me time. What would you present to this court, Mr. Well, Kelly? I could present the fact that the claims that she put that they filed are false. For instance, the car on the lawn, the the um, threatening of the employees. Um, I can't. I don't have all of them in front of me, but I could prove that those are aren't true. And there's been other write-ups that through the. I suppose you have a photo. We do I have a photo. It's his mother-in-law's car. It was towed last year after many months and notices that the car needed to be removed. Okay, what My is... understanding, Mr. Kelly, please let me finish, is that when the tow company came out to remove it, he threatened the tow company. Now, I'm still trying That's to... That's a lie. That trying. is a lie, and I can prove it wrong because I talked, I spoke to the Mayflower towing guy, and he denied that he ever said that. In fact, Ms. Smith said that he told her that I... Can I take a look? He told her that I pulled the gun. Um, yeah, what? what is this? The car? I'm not denying the car. I'm denying the, the fact what they said. You Mr. Just, Mr. Kelly, Mr. you Smith just gave me permission, Your Honor, for that car to be on the grass. She knew that it was my ex-wife's mother's car, and she just passed away, and she didn't have anywhere to put it. And it, I had it on my driveway, leaking a little bit, so I just moved it. Now, I repaired that lawn, and I it, it, it's a beautiful-looking car, if you saw it, but she was aware of it. Now, there was some controversy the day that it got told because I was asking her to please wait because my ex had called me and she called. If she gave you permission, why would they have it towed? Because it just it, it took. Why would they have it towed? Because if gave, what you said, Mr. Kelly, if it's true, that they gave you permission to have it there, why would they have it towed? It was. Your Honor, I can prove that it was. See, it does answer my question. It, it was told because I had it, it had come to the point where it was on the lawn. It was there too long, and she said that it. She so, gave me. She stamped the car. The car was there for a year, Your Honor, on that lawn for a year, and then she put a tag on the car, and that's when we started negotiating. And I called my ex and told her, "You got to get this car off, out of here." They want it out, and it's going to be towed. That was when it came to the to that point, Mr. Kelly. When it was on the lawn, Mr. For Kelly, a year, Your Honor, Mr. Kelly. Yes, you told me three different things about this car. <laughs> You're telling me that you they gave you permission to have it on there. Yes. So how long? Presuming they gave you permission, how long were they allowing you to keep it on the property? There wasn't any set time. It was there. I kept the lawn. I I always whipped around the car. I cut the lawn when the car was gone. I didn't ask I, you about the lawn. I repaired the lawn. I didn't ask you about the lawn. There wasn't anything in writing or set. It just came to the point where it was there too long. Like I said, Pam and I got along fine. And then it was getting to the point, look, that car has been on there or the car has been sitting there for too long. It didn't have proper plates. And that's when she put, she, they put a tag on it and they gave me 10 days to get it out of there. And did you? I was on my ex-wife. It was, yes, she was in the process of getting it. And I was on, I had no. You talk in so many I circles, no, Mr. I, Kelly. I'm not talking in circles. You here. absolutely are. You're asking me what, happened and I'm telling you. I didn't ask you what happened. I'm asking you very specific questions and you're not answering. I'm telling you. You that take off going in another direction. I didn't have anywhere to put Why do I care whether you we whipped around the car? 
I guess you don't. I don't. I didn't ask you that. Well, they're making it out like my property's a, a junk pile, and it isn't. It's one of the nicest kept up yards in the area. Did I ask you that? No, I'm sorry. First of all, there's nothing in any of our pleadings in any way, shape, or form alleging that his site looks like a junk pile. So, no, that is absolutely false. Your Honor, I have here a rule violation issued December 30th, 2022. No parking on the lawn. A rule violation issued on January 12th, 2023. No parking on the lawn. There is a note that they also emailed him about the dog being outside on a coyote, also a violation of the rules and regulations, and the vehicle being on the lawn. On two one, he called and said he will remove the car within one week. On two sixteen, the car was tagged. I don't know the exact date that it was towed offhand, Your Honor, but David? April twenty third, Your Honor. So many months after all of this, so Mr. Kelly had ample time to remove the car, and he didn't. Your Honor, I asked for speaking with Miss Smith, and it was kind of between them at that point. <laughs> no. I Tor I'm oh, talking. Matt. I'm talking about the last. You can ask her. My ex talked to her. They were Mr. Kelly. They were talking. Mr. Kelly. Back and forth. Her mother died here. Mr. Kelly. Yes. They told you to get the car off the lawn. And they I, told you you were in violation. And I did. You did nothing. I did get it. It was towed. Who towed it? Mayflower towing. Okay. At that point, bad, I said, bad question. I said, take. I you want to know what? I was trying to say this my is why. Money. This she is, was, you're, Mr. Kelly, yes. you're never going to overtalk me. I'm not trying. No, to. you are. Just seems like i just a man trying to save my house, Mr. Kelly, you told me about that vehicle. I just take that. What they told me is what Ms. Dornbush laid out. You weren't telling me the truth. I am telling you the truth. No, you're not. Why would she give you permission to park on the lawn and then send you a notice that you're in violation? Because it, I can give you proof of when the car was there and when it was told listen was to my question listen to my question go ahead oh no mr kelly you better check that attitude right now you better check it i'm not trying you to. better check it mr kelly oh don't oh, I, no. I don't know what oh, no. i'm doing wrong here. here's here's one thing that you've done Please wrong. Tell here's me. one thing that you've done wrong well, you're, I am not going to have that attitude coming from you. I don't. You need to figure out what you're doing. You have interrupted me throughout these entire proceedings. I'm not going to have it. Outside of the fact you've got a warrant for your arrest. I apologize. you got a warrant. I didn't know that. Yeah. It's from the driving while license suspended. I so here's what we're going to do. Sorry. Just so happens the judge that's in front of his next door. But right now, you're going to go into custody. We're going to take you in. I'm going to go next door, talk to Judge Freshour, see what she wants me to do with you. Please, Your Honor, I have a gun. I need to wait. What did I just say? I just checked with the court about a warrant. <laughs> Court's going to stay in a brief recess. I'll be right back. Court does call the case. Uh, River Ridge versus Timothy Kelly. Good morning, Your Honor. Rachel Dornbush, Pallets Law, P78301, on behalf of the plaintiff. Uh, Kelly is not here. We have checked the hallway all the way down to the lobby. and He's not here. This is date and time set for trial. How would you like to proceed? Uh, Your Honor, in light of his failure to appear, may I be sworn? Yes. Do you solemnly swear or firm testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth shall be got? I do. Again, for the record, Your Honor, Rachel Dornbush, Pallets Law, on behalf of the plaintiff. Uh, Your Honor, this is the date and time set for a bench trial in plaintiff's action to terminate defendant's tenancy in the community. Uh, Your Honor, as you can see, we have a courtroom witnesses uh, here prepared to testify. Um, 
in support of plaintiff's case uh, based on defendant's failure to appear, we are requesting entry of a default possession only judgment with a writ to issue after November 11th. Uh, Your Honor, this action is based on uh, Mr. Kelly's uh, violations of the lease agreement, community rules and regulations, um, which include uh, threatening harassing behavior towards management, um, harassing behavior towards other residents, um, not maintaining utilities in his home, um, violating um, Michigan law by driving his car uh, without a license in the community, um, keeping his dog outside unattended on a tie out and other various uh, violations, Your Honor. I do have to present to the court a proposed judgment of possession that does require Mr. Kelly to cease residing in the home by November 11th, it does, Your Honor, provide Mr. Kelly 90 days to sell or remove the manufactured home subject to uh, certain conditions under MCL 6005781, which is listed on the back of that judgment, Your Honor, as Mr. Kelly owns his manufactured home. A few things to note, though, Your Honor, uh, there is some money in escrow. And we would be requesting that, that uh, those funds be released plain TIF. Uh, Your Honor, the Michigan Mobile Home Commission Act, and let me have to pull my phone out so I can cite the specific statute for your honor does indicate that in an action to terminate tenancy the prevailing party is entitled to liquidated damages and in this type of action your honor those liquidated damages are five hundred dollars um so we would be requesting that the court award those liquidated damages and giving plaintiff authority to assess those liquidated damages to his ledger uh immediately after giving um a seven-day notice that those charges will be assessed to him if not paid. Finally, Your Honor, plaintiff is entitled as well to statutory court costs. Those amounts are $174. So we would be requesting not only the $500 in liquidated damages, but the statutory court costs of $174 as well. Uh, Your Honor, the statute uh, at issue is MCL 125.2328C which indicates in an action to terminate tenancy for just cause, the prevailing party is entitled to those liquidated damages of $500 in an action in the district court. Also, there's a provision for $300 at the appellate division, but the $500 amount would apply in this matter. Uh, finally, Your Honor, we do have a couple of concerns regarding um, Mr. Kelly's presence in the community. We have a number of witnesses here uh, prepared to testify um, of their number one, fear of his presence in the community, but also their fear of retaliation. Um, they were concerned about their testimony here today. And if Mr. Kelly had appeared and um, been witness to their testimony, we were intending to ask the court to enter an order um, requiring Mr. Kelly to refrain from any contact with um, the witnesses that were here today, um, out of their concern that he may retaliate based on their testimony. Uh, I know Mr. Kelly's not here to witness their presence, um, but I know that the court is recording this session, yeah. and I would still request that the court make that order as there is a concern that he may act out based on the ruling here today. Here's what I'll do. I will sign an order to that effect if you prepare one send one to the court i will sign it that will yeah. that way that will give him notice if he wishes to challenge it challenge the court's issuance of the order or the court's authority to issue such order then he may do so we'll uh, do once the seven day rule notice yeah and the last thing your honor is after the last of Mr. Kelly's personal property is disposed of in the community, which presumably will be the manufactured home itself. The community is asking that he be deemed a trespasser in the community. It is a privately run community, private property, and based on his behavior in the community and the threats that he has made uh, to management, and again, I have manager here prepared to offer testimony if your honor needs it, um, that once he no longer owns personal property in the community, that he be deemed a trespasser and not allowed to enter River Ridge at that point. I think, um, well, for purposes of any type of landlord-tenant proceeding, I don't think I could consider him a trespasser because he came in under color of right. However, if he does enter the premises, and I think actually pursuant to the criminal statutes, you could send notice somehow to him of that he is not welcome on the premises that way then if he comes on the premises the criminal statute is complied with by being told that he cannot appear on the property and then if he enters the property he would be deemed a trespasser 
Would the court allow me to include that language in the order I'm submitting under the seven day rule? Because that would serve as notice to him that following disposition and removal of his property from the community, he is not allowed to access the community. Yes, you can include that in there. I will do that. Right. Um, and I'm, I'm letting you include that. I'm not in including that. I'm not making a statement as to whether or not that would be sufficient notice for a criminal trespass case. Understood. That would be up to the prosecutor. Um, how much, what were the costs you were claiming? Uh, 174, Your Honor. Thank you. So what I've done is I have indicated the escrow will be released to plaintiff and plaintiff is entitled to $500 liquidated damages cost of $174. And that is awarded to the plaintiff. And so I place that under paragraph 10. I have also made a change at the order of eviction being the 12th because the 11th is a holiday. Understood. Your so, and thank you for that. And I decided the judge. Thank you. Thank you. Court calls the case of River Ridge versus Timothy Kelly. Rachel Dornbush, Your Honor, on behalf of the plaintiff. I, your name, sir? Timothy Kelly. I have two motions up. I have your motion to set aside the default. Put the picture of my daughter here. She's an occupant. She wanted to be here to say something, but she was in school. Okay. Thank you. Uh, no, sir, that's not, that picture is not going to happen that way. I, You're not going to sit up there and display things to the court that way. Okay, I asked first. I'm sorry. I've, been, I've mentioned her a lot, so I just wanted you to see her. All right, this is, let's deal with your motion first, Mr. Kemp. Your Honor, did you get um, the F evidence package, the exhibit evidence? I asked the girls when I walked in. Uh, um, girls, I mean the nice ladies up front. I have uh, I have these picture exhibits. I don't know if Ms. Tornbush has them or not, but no. I, I have okay. them. Okay, you do have them? Your Honor, I do not have them, just so the court is aware. All right. I thought you, they were both sent because I have a double thing where you could send group, and I sent them. At any rate. Okay. <laughs> All right. Your Honor, uh, I, I just um, would do process. The most important thing is being heard, and I haven't been able to be heard yet and state my case and defending myself with all these accusations. And, um, you know, I, that, that's why I know, I know I missed the trial, but there's all kinds of things, reasons for it. I, I've met all the demands of the court. If you remember, I was before you for four or five months in a row dealing with the rent and we made decisions and I lived up to the demands and so on and so forth. So, I, you know, I, I, did you read the uh, motion where I gave Sir, you? I have read everything okay. that comes in. in this All right. I didn't know. I'm just, um, you know, I want to have a trial. I, I, in, uh, Sir, I gave you that opportunity to have a trial on October 30th and you failed to appear. I know, but fails to appear sometimes happens. Can I read something to you, Your Honor? This is by, this is our all diversion programs and sent down by the Attorney General to try and help tenant landlord disputes. But a judge could take a proactive role in the hearing by ensuring that both parties so know. What are you reading from? It's a, it's recommendations from, I've never, we never even got a chance to talk or settle. I mean, we had a last settlement conference, but I didn't have, we didn't talk about anything. And before that, the the attorney and the landlord, uh, or I'm sorry, the property manager kept me from talking to him. We couldn't even try and settle. And throughout the whole thing, they uh, all the uh, legal stuff that I read is that you try and work it out before the eviction case. And also, I have, I I have, this is for sure a retaliatory eviction, and you wouldn't even let me speak on it the one time I brought it up, because, sir, you know what? What? 
<laughs> if you give me a trial, Your Honor, <laughs> did you read the? Did you did you read the? Did you read the character references my neighbor sent you? Do not the Mitchell. Do not do not come here. What? at this hour questioning me I'm not- about what you think I haven't read. I have just told you that I read everything okay. in the file. I apologize. Do not come here before me because all of these people have been sitting here. They've been here and tell me ever that I won't give somebody an opportunity to be heard. Do not insult this court that way. Do not insult me that way. Now, if you want to start your argument again, you may, but you will not sit here and impugn the character of this court or of me with regard to listening to tenants and landlords regarding these proceedings. And you will not attempt to try to school me with some literature as to how to handle a case. I have been doing, you know what? What? I'm going to pass this case and because and, and because I want to make sure that I'm listening to you. And I, I don't think these other people that are sitting in here should have to wait through your shenanigans. I'm conf- so have a seat. I'm confused, Your Honor. Please. I didn't say it was you. I said due process. That's all I said. Have a seat. I wasn't saying anything. Have a seat and keep your mouth closed. You throw something down again, we're going to have a problem. Will you throw something down again, we're going to have a problem. Sorry, bro. Okay, okay. Go! Will you hand me my screen box? (laughs) Now go freak! Let me retry this. Court recalls the case of River Ridge versus... Tim Timothy Kelly. This is your motion to set aside the default judgment. There are two parts to the setting aside of a default judgment before you start going on. The first part is, is that you have to have good cause for failure to appear. State every reason for your good cause for failure to appear for the trial. Oh, you want me to state it now? I just I asked the question. Okay, I'm sorry. I thought you were making a statement. Well, as I as I um, iterated in the motion that one, I I don't have transportation. It's very hard to get it. I I don't have the money for an Uber or a taxi or any of that. I. If you recall, I told you, I, for one of the hearings, I rode my bike 30 miles round trip. So I, it's not that I wasn't trying to get here. And I also, right from the beginning, everything I've told you has been the truth. I mean, in the beginning of the, we had trouble with the rent. I told you that I was also going through litigation with the front of the court. And as a father, that's a very hard thing to to figure out and uh, such. So that's one of the reasons was my daughter called me that night and she had an emergency and I had to take care of it. And she was with me the next day, the trial day. And uh, we received no notification or phone call from you indicating that there was some delay or some reason why you couldn't be here that day. Uh, the reason probably, why you didn't call the court. Yes, and I'll tell you, I that week I had dropped my phone and it broke and I had no way to call anybody. I didn't have any way to get any of my trial st- stuff out. I couldn't access anything. I didn't have the money to buy another phone. So for four days, five days there, I was in purgatory, so to speak, without being able to c- communicate, without getting being able to get anything off the phone um, pertaining to the trial or our case, this case. And that's the truth. I mean, you couldn't have found a place to call from. Pardon me. You couldn't have found a place to call the court from. Yes. Well, I was in the middle of uh, this. Look at my child. 
I can't, I don't want to put it on record yet because it has to do with some serious things going on with her safety wise. So, and I didn't know, it's very hard to, I don't want to, can I ask you a question about the trial? I mean, I don't want you to think I'm questioning your judgment, but I'm confused about why, why it was set on to the bench when I demanded a jury trial way back. We have always gone. We have already gone through this. You failed to comply with the escrow order. Plaintiff was entitled to a trial as to the issue of possession an immediate trial. I set it out a few days. We have been through this. I'm not relitigating everything, nor answering all of the questions that I've asked that I've answered for you in the past, Mr. Kelly. I'm just not doing it. I don't recall this talk, talking about whether it was going to be a bench or a jury. Honestly, Your Honor. And I've Your Honor, met I, I can state the exact date that this was addressed because I specifically emailed the court to clarify if the jury was waived and was able to verify. So I, I can remind the court the exact date that that conversation happened. I thought at that time that it was a... I'm not going back over this. Your Honor, if you would listen to, if I could cross-examine witnesses and bring my witnesses in, you'd see a different light on this, I swear. I haven't been able to present anything. You don't, I, I mean, may I ask you another question that I don't get, I'm not questioning you, but I wasn't there and I don't understand how um, it, it came to the trespass and the witnesses that I can't go around them, I don't. What was said that you think I'm a danger to the community? It wasn't an issue of you necessarily being a danger to the community. They were trespassing you after the writ would issue. It's as simple as that. Okay, well, I, I mean, those were a couple on the list were friends. I mean, I get along with Kevin, and so I didn't understand why I was out, you know, but... <laughs> It was a good reason. I wanted. I want you to know the facts of the case. That's the all. The second thing is, is that you have to state to the court a meritorious defense. Please state your meritorious defenses, Mr. Kelly. Well, uh, can you help me out with the meaning of that? More? No. No. Okay. Well, you know, I, I don't. I, I know I'm have a right to counsel, but all the resources are used up. I have tried for three since this case began to get some help from the state and all the resources that are listed, you know, and nobody, they're all filled up. I'm, you know, I, I think uh, I'm a, it's hard to even express because I'm afraid I'll offend you. And sir, do not try to blame me. I'm not blaming you this. at all. You just need to say what you're going to say. Okay, well, I don't think that there's anybody that comes before this court that would at all indicate I don't listen. I may not agree with you, but I will always listen. So don't try to put it, poor me. No. Somehow this judge won't listen to me. I'm not say what you have to say, and then I will make my decision. Well, I had all kinds of things written down. I started to read it, and you cut, you said, don't read that to me. Well, I don't know how to present. Can we go over the evidence? May we do that? I marked all the... Your Honor, I would object. I've not seen this evidence that Mr. Kelly is referring to. It certainly wasn't attached to the motion that, that I received. I don't know when it was filed with the court, but I've not seen this evidence to be able to comment uh, to be able to prepare any sort of response it, to it. It, pertain, it pertains to my oral argument already on the record, Your Honor. I'm going to sustain her objection. You can't come here with new things expecting for the opposing side to respond to them. Well, I was going it to fill out work that way. OK, I was going to fill out an amendment to the motion, but, it, you know, I've been up all week, all night trying to just get the mo you know, the proper paperwork into you and do it all right. It's not easy being an, uh, you know, 95% of us tenants don't have lawyers. We're pro se. So, you know, I don't, I don't know where to get any help. 
as far as the legal, but she has been able to bring the list of the original offenses. She's added on to that throughout the trial, the plaintiff has. I mean, now my dog's, you know, first it was just four items. And she's brought up my dog. She's brought up. So she's added on without. So I'm just confused about the way to present evidence, I guess. I, you know, I mean, she brought up my daughter missing a day of school. Where did that come from? I mean, all I of those. I didn't mention his daughter at all, Your Honor. I'm sorry. It's, when in, the it, it's in the transcripts. I can, I can't pull it up right now, but it's there. Because it bothered me. Honestly. I mean, I I don't know how to present to you. How, why don't I get to present the um, retaliation defense? You haven't listened to what Sir, happened there. I need meritorious defenses you have to this claim. You can't tell me what, may I look the word up in my phone? If you can do it quickly, you can go ahead and do it quickly. <laughs> Never mind. Okay. No, go ahead and look it up. I don't and, Your Honor, Mr. Kelly is retrieving his phone. I just want to make the court aware that I would like an opportunity to respond to. Oh, absolutely. As soon as we can get there. What's the word, Your Honor? Meritorious. Meritorious. Did you spell it for me? No. Okay. See. Oh. You filed the motion. Yeah, I probably should have paid attention to that. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's hard. I've been reading everything in the law. It's the only way I can do anything. And there's a lot to take in, Your Honor. The delay suspension. Oh, okay. I know. I did read that. That was... That's kind of like the what they did for COVID with the money. Do I have that right? Sorry. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, I'm like, I have no idea. Is it moratorium? I'm oh, sorry. Okay. My defense is, is that I just want to be heard. And I didn't say that you did anything wrong to make that not happen. But with reading all the stuff in the legal that you have to read if you're on, if you're pro se, you know, I'm not an attorney, but I'm starting to at least learn some of the laws between tenant and landlord and everything I read is the land of America is trying to the courts handed down by the attorney general and the Supreme court on helping the litigants, especially the tenants, because they're the ones that are come to you with not no resources as far as, money for an attorney or any of that. And the landlords always have the best attorneys. Like I said, 95% of us are pro se. So all I can do, and I've tried to, I told you an attorney called from Michigan legal help, but he just left a message and never got back to me. And so I have to read on these motions and read on the appeals and read on the on how to go about a defense and when i present the the no no um, come back oh, okay well can't no i was gonna make i think you should stay too go ahead when i'm trying to present the um retaliatory tel eviction there's all kinds of writings on that in the law so it, it must be something that happens in court or they wouldn't have it in there correct I mean, there, I'm not a bad person. I want you to know the truth, Your Honor. I don't, I'm not saying you're a bad person. Miss Lee, you have a reason. Is there a reason? I'm sorry, Your Honor. Um, I did want to uh, corroborate Mr. Kelly's account. He did get in touch with our hotline, our housing intake line. We have been trying to give him advice over the phone, but we did not have the resources to represent him. If you would like me to sit with Mr. Kelly for a bit and try to um, assist him a little bit further, I'm happy to do that. Okay. If you're willing to do that, Ms. Dornbush, I'm sorry to hold up your evening, but 
I will allow it to happen because I'm probably one of the most unfair judges I've ever met, but I'm, I'm going to try to be fair. I, Mr. Kelly, can I step away from the podium? May I give step, you a no, compliment, no, please? No, Your Honor? no. Okay. Do not give me a compliment. Do not say anything to me at this point. All right. <laughs> Handle Mr. Fink's cases, Ms. Dornbush. Sooner or later, you'll be able to go home. Okay. <laughs> She's going to be mad at me. I, I would never. I would never dare. <laughs> I tried. River Ridge versus Timothy Kelly. Yep, Miss Dorn. I am still here, Judge. Yeah. I called the case. What are we doing? Well, Your Honor, as far as um, what you asked me about the defense, I just want to make a notation at the bottom. It says, upon information relief, resident has failed to remedy the violations after being given an opportunity to cure. Thus, grounds for termination exist. I've, I, I did uh, cure all of them. At the time they asked, every time they ever asked, it was always, I always met their demand, whether I, I liked it or not. So I would like an opportunity to, to go to trial and defend this and show you that. And I, as far as any verbal abuse, I, I, I put in a, um, one of my letters that, or one of my motions that. Uh, somewhere there's a phone call of that because it was a three-way conversation and I I uh, didn't know if I needed to look it up or not. But as far as the upon information belief and all those lists, please, I, I, I deny them and I can go one by one if you want. I'd, I'd just like the opportunity to show you and, and cross-examine witnesses if there are any, um, you know, trying to accuse me of this. I, I adamantly deny most of what's on here. I mean, there was the car, we talked about it, on the grass, but that was during the settlement conference. During What I was just trying to explain to you is it didn't, that's not how it was. It says parking on the lawn on or about. That car was on the lawn for about three months, and then she asked me to move it to the drive. We pushed it to the drive, and then it finally got towed three months later for expired are um, not, ex yeah, expired plates because the car wasn't running it that, but it had legal plates up until that point. So that's all I was trying to explain that one day um, about the car when, you know, the final settlement conference. I wasn't disputing that at one point it was on the lawn, but it's kind of, and I don't know how that works, but I do have witnesses for most of these two, uh, to dispute them. And I I don't know if you have that in front of you, but doesn't that read like if the cure was given that there wouldn't be grounds for termination or am I reading that wrong? Because I did cure everything they've ever asked me to do as far as right. moving. All right, Ms. Dornbrook's response. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm waiting for Mr. Kelly to get his hearing device. Thank you. Okay. Your Honor, at the outset, when Mr. Kelly first began speaking, he made a statement that he has complied with all demands of the court. And I want to first address that statement because that's absolutely false. Uh, Mr. Kelly has not complied with all the, the demands of the court because he was ordered to do several things early on and he did not do any of them timely. Most recently, he did not pay the full October rent into escrow. He did not pay November rent into escrow. He did not pay um, rent into escrow with the motion that he filed, even though he checked the box stating that he did. <clears throat> he made a statement, Your Honor, that... Um, there was no opportunity to settle this. That is also false because Mr. Kelly and I had a very lengthy conversation back in August, at which time we did attempt to settle this, but the settlement offer that I was authorized to make was not something that Mr. Kelly was satisfied with. The only settlement that Mr. Kelly wants is an agreement by my client that he can stay. And that's not something my client is going to agree to. And I made that very clear to Mr. Kelly. Your Honor, with respect to Mr. Kelly's motion and his statement that he has good cause for his failure to appear, he put many things 
in his motion, Your Honor, um, I would say the majority of them have absolutely no relevance to the issue of good cause. Um, that is delineated in the response that um, I filed with the court. And Your Honor, just for Mr. Kelly's awareness, there was a glitch in our system and um, the address that I mailed my response to, which it went out day before yesterday, so we probably didn't, wouldn't have been delivered by today anyway, um, it's not going to go to him. So with his permission, I will email him a copy of it if he wants it for his records. I'll stick it in the mail as well because I do have his oh. email address. Um, okay, yes. Well, you have the court's permission to do that. Understand what to do. Yeah, I don't have a problem. Thank yeah. you, Your Honor. Um, the specific issues that he put in um, that I believe have absolutely no relevance to the issue of good cause is that um, the court being aware of his transportation issue and is having to ride a bike to the court previously, he somehow managed to get here every time. Um, further, for this specific motion, or excuse me, the trial date, Your Honor, Mr. Kelly stated he had a ride lined up and he chose not to take the ride because of another reason. And we'll touch on that in a moment. Um, but he had a ride lined up and he has a ride today, I believe. My, my client's here and sees that there's another resident in the community that she believes may have driven Mr. Kelly to court today. So clearly he has the ability to get transportation here. As the court noted, Mr. Kelly didn't call the court and Mr. Kelly made a statement that his phone was broken. But your honor, I seem to recall, and maybe I misheard, but in this hearing, when questioned about why he didn't call the court, he said he didn't have a phone. But just a minute before that, didn't he say that his daughter called him about an emergency? The night so before. his daughter was able to call him the night before if his phone was broken for the three or four days before that, somehow he didn't have a phone the morning of court to call. But not only that, he's obviously got people in the community that are there to support him. As the court pointed out, he could have borrowed a phone from anybody. So I don't believe that Mr. Kelly has stated good cause. For the additional reasons stated in my motion, Your Honor, um, he stated his belief that um, he'd be given a break because uh, default was um, a possibility, may enter. But Your Honor, Mr. Kelly's been in court before uh, and failed to appear and a default judgment was entered against him. And I referenced that uh, particular case number uh, in my response. Uh, Your Honor, he um, referenced his concern related to his alleged request for a jury trial, but the court has already touched on that. And Your Honor, the date, just for the record, that um, that particular issue was addressed was September 20th of this year. Um, he cites an alleged case with the Michigan Civil Liberties Department, and I assume he means the Michigan Department of Civil Rights when he states that. Again, mm -hmm. has no bearing on his good cause for appearing at the trial date. That he was finally in touch with an attorney from MI Legal Help. Again, no bearing on his good cause for failure to appear. And that he intends to file appellate pleadings. Again, no good cause for his failure to appear. Um, Your Honor, this emergency with his daughter, I, I, I'm, I'm sympathetic to whatever's going on in his family situation. But Your Honor, Mr. Kelly has been stating various times throughout these proceedings that this alleged custody issue um, has interfered or detracted from his ability to meaningfully engage in this court process. And Your Honor, I personally did a search of the Circuit County Register of Actions. I don't see anything pending in that case. My understanding from what's available on that register of actions is that Mr. Kelly's ex-wife has sole legal custody of his daughter. And one of the police reports that uh, we were able to obtain from the Michigan State Police, and I believe it's from sometime last year, I don't have the exact date, that there has been no change in that. They specifically referenced that his ex-wife has custody, full legal custody of his daughter, and that there's been no change to that. If there's been some change between 2023 and now, Your Honor, it's not showing on the register of actions, but there's nothing pending showing in that case with the Washtenaw County Circuit Court. Um, Your Honor, with respect to this alleged meritorious defense, first off, we've already addressed at the settlement conference before Mr. Kelly was taken into custody for that bench warrant, why additional things were added and more specifically stated in our complaint for termination of tenancy. And that is because the demand that was issued, Your Honor, states reserves the right to bring this and other issues that are lease violations to proceed on the termination action. And so at that court date, Your Honor, which was approximately three weeks ago, Mr. Kelly had notice of what additional grounds would be relied upon by plaintiff. Um, one of those issues was an actual mission by Mr. Kelly with a photo he provided to the court of his dog sitting outside on a tie out. 
community doesn't allow that. And frankly, Your Honor, the dog was tied out again today. Mr. Kelly, nowhere in sight. My client is signed into Zoom right here, and she could tell the court that, again, the dog was tied out. Mr. Kelly was not out there with him. Minor, minor violation of the rules, Your Honor, yes, but it's just a continuation of Mr. Kelly believing the rules don't apply to him. Your Honor, and that's unfortunately been how this process has gone throughout. Every time the court has ordered Mr. Kelly to do something and he didn't follow through, there's just been some reason why he should be given leeway and that he shouldn't be bound by the orders of this court, the rules of the community, the laws of the state of Michigan, Your Honor. Um, speaking of those laws, Mr. Kelly has still yet to state any defense to his driving in the community probably since 2017 without a license. The lease that he signed clearly states he is, in, he is to be in compliance with the laws of the state, local ordinance, uh, federal law. And Mr. Kelly is in violation of Michigan state law by driving without a license in the community. He's been living there since 2017, and I believe he acknowledged at the settlement conference on the 22nd of October that he hasn't had a license since 2017. So that on its own is sufficient grounds for this court to grant a judgment of possession. And I believe Your Honor even alluded to that at the last court date and still gave Mr. Kelly the courtesy of having an opportunity to appear for a bench trial and bring his witnesses. With respect to this um, alleged retaliation or retaliatory eviction, Your Honor, the statute is very clear on what constitutes retaliation. And Mr. Kelly has yet to cite anything in that statute that my client uh, that he has done that would bring about bring about a claim of retaliation by my client. But even if he had, Judge, that is a rebuttable presumption. And my client would still have the ability to show that they have legitimate grounds to terminate Mr. Kelly's tenancy. Your Honor, at that settlement conference, it was discussed how Mr. Kelly's answer was deficient for a number of reasons. One of those things being that he in no way addressed the specific issues that were referenced in the termination of tenancy notice, that being the animal loose in the community, um, disturbing other residents, parking on the lawn, uh, failure to maintain the home in sight, verbally abusive towards management. Um, he's addressed a few of those things today, Your Honor. My client would acknowledge today that certain issues with respect to um, uh, violations relating to condition of the site were addressed. But as we discussed at length at the October 22nd hearing, Your Honor, with respect to the vehicle, it sat there for months after violations. And Mr. Kelly didn't do anything about it. My client had to ultimately have the vehicle towed. So there's a violation right there that there's clearly no defense to. With respect to uh, the verbal abuse of management, uh, Your Honor, that, how do you cure that? You can't go back and take the words back. I mean, it happened. Um, so that's not really a curable thing. With respect to disturbing other residents, that's something that continues to happen. Um, that's not true. Uh, I mean, that's just a, that's just a statement. Mr. Kelly, I didn't I interrupt oh, you. Oh, I'm sorry. I can't I'm talk. I, I thought you, you were done. I'm sorry. An, you will have an opportunity to respond. But, Your Honor, okay. we talked at length on October 22nd about how Mr. Kelly's answer was deficient because it didn't address those things. And in filing his motion, Your Honor, he still doesn't address those things. The only things that he brings up is this alleged audio recording that he thinks will prove retaliation. But that's not gonna be sufficient. The statement that he's provided does not give any detail, which is the issue that was precisely stated at the hearing on the 22nd and Mr. Kelly is still not following the rules and now expects the court to give him leeway again. The court has already done that by setting the matter for a bench trial on the 30th. Mr. Kelly's own motion, Your Honor, clearly states, I made the decision not to come to court because I didn't want to bring my daughter. He made a calculated decision based on the circumstances not to come to court. And he has not set forth anything in his motion that should change that outcome respectfully, Your Honor. And so I have to ask that this court deny his motion and allow the judgment to stand. Your Honor, I, I want to address the motion itself. She had brought in the, I meant to put that under the ex parte where I, where I um, marked the money to go into escrow. And, but there was no escrow file. No, there wasn't, but there was a box. Your Honor, when I was before you 
before it was some, you know that I have money problems. I, I have a fixed income coming in every week, every month. And when that comes in, I can pay any, any arrearage. I mean, and that's what I was speaking to when I met the demands. When only in the money, I wasn't talking about here, here, but when I went before you, I've been going before you for the last four or five months before the just cause. And I'm, what I was saying was that, you know, when you said pay on this date and the court said I, we did except the one time when I was $43 short, which I should probably bring up. And regarding the, the settlement agreement, I was taught, I was going through these. In fact, I was on the park, the car on the lawn discussing it and speaking to you, your honor, when you discovered the warrant thing and then I was taken out. So I, and when I came back, we didn't discuss anymore. So, I mean, I don't know how I can address it, it better than that. We were addressing it and going down the list, but then, then I didn't, you know, I didn't get to, but, uh, you know, it's kind of hard. I'm trying to follow her. Uh, you know, some of these things, she says that I don't, in my answer, I don't explain things. It's kind of general. Well, not this stuff doesn't either. It just says that, you know, she's stating that the abuse and uh, threatening of staff, I have yet to hear, what are you talking about? I mean, I can throw out, we can all throw out things out there, but I, what did I say? Who's, who did I say it to? You know, what was it? Because I can remember that conversation and the incident because that coincides with the, the um, electricity, the electrical cord. So, I mean, it's, it's, <laughs> I mean, these are kind of vague too. I don't know how to, how, how to defend them, but there is the, the reason there's a civil right. And I did, put the letters wrong but as far as the Michigan Department of Civil's rights that I do have a a uh, case number or a complaint number and that's for the very reason that I've been trying to explain to you about the differences in her you know my her writing me up or the you know the landlord or the property manager writing me up and not writing the neighbor up for the exact same thing. I mean, that's listed in discrimination um, by the state of Michigan. I read it and it uses an example like that. Like if you, you have a, a, a resident here or a tenant here that, that is late for their uh, rent and you go in and make a move on them, but the across the street is the same exact thing. They're late on rent, but you don't there. That's a civil infraction from what I've read, or it's discrimination, and that's that's what's going on here. That's why I kind of brought in, you know, those sent those pictures to you. I mean, I and as far as um, the day I missed, that was that was a terrible week. When I, you know, when you, it was my responsibility. I say that in my motion that I got um, cuffed and thrown in jail. But you know, I get home and I'm on this this website that I've never seen before. My daughter brings it in and it's, and it's you. And it says contemptuous defendant um, goes out the back door and gosh, the, the comments were brutal. I mean, brutal. It's not up anymore, but it was and my daughter actually uh, answered to some of it. So that week was just brutal. But I said that about my daughter because when, and, and the neighbor that, drove me here he had left he's left so i'm stranded again but he will attest that we were ready to he was my ride he usually is and his car's in the driveway right now it broke down and i did try to get other rides but everybody's at work at that time of day so what i meant in that was i did have my daughter if i do get a ride i got to take her i wonder if it, you well know, but our, you said you had made a decision not to well, only because I didn't know if it was allowed at the no, court. No, 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 no. You're telling me you had this and this is what you would have done. But your motion says you had made a decision because of your daughter not to come to court. You With can't her. have it both ways. No, I know. I explained before that, that what I was going to bring her, Your Honor. That's what that meant. But I said I don't want to make 
you mad again because I didn't know if minors were allowed in here. I mean, it explains that before that. I mean, she wants to, you know, she's 13. She wanted to make a statement to you about it because it's kind of her house. But that's what I, uh, that's not what I meant by it. I take her everywhere since she was born. I have no qualms bringing her, but I meant that I finally, because I tried to find rides. We couldn't find a ride with the neighbors. They were all at work. John's the only one that can give me one. Car still broke down in the driveway, Your Honor. Your Honor, may I try- Go, go. Just please. Keep going, Mr. Kelly, whatever you want to say. I mean, oh, I can I- tell you where it's going and i you know i'm not an expert you can't tell anything about okay maybe you're right i'm sorry i i but i'm just this is very tough to just present it in a professional way and say it as i mean but that's honest i mean i was trying to get a ride here but that was the final decision so i don't get a babysitter for her and go hitchhike down michigan i just said since she's here you know i don't i'm gonna that was just meant that I made that decision after I couldn't find a ride. But I, I mean, I haven't skipped your court dates. I, I'm not looking to, I'm looking to save my house. I mean, and it's not necessarily. Mr. Kelly. It's not necessarily to stay there, Your Honor. Mr. Kelly, I'm going to stop you because. Okay. May I say. You just sat, you just sat here, tried to tell me some story about that you were going to appear. I'm going right to what you filed with this court. Okay. I have good cause for my failure to appear. I did not appear slash answer because, colon, I did not go to the court because I had an emergency hearing regarding, that emergency regarding my 13-year-old daughter the night before says nothing about you actually bringing her Says nothing about her coming to the court as though you just represented to the court you didn't come because of her man i'm done i don't have my memory I'm, I'm so done. please your honor i just want to mr ch- kelly you're gonna tow my house away with all my possessions not you i am mr kelly i am gonna follow the law I've listened to you all day and you keep going back and forth in some of these things, but I'm ready to rule. I've listened to the plaintiff. I've listened to you. Please give me a trial, your honor. Please. I, all right, Mr. Kelly, I gave a trial date for the parties to be here. It should be noted, although plaintiff didn't say much about it. Plaintiff was here with all of their witnesses waiting for you to appear. Everybody interrupted their day. They were here ready to go and you didn't appear. And quite frankly, from the court's perspective, I don't or the court doesn't hear from you for a good nine, 10 days after the trial day. Don't hear anything about what happened, this, that, nothing. Sorry, Your Honor. No, you don't have to be sorry. I'm just saying, you're distorting what has transpired. Plaintiff was here, ready to go, ready to, I'm presuming, state with specificity, have testimony and evidence and evidence regarding every one of their allegations. You do not appear. Your notion that you've been following the direction of the court, not true. I had to beg you to get an answer into me. I finally got that to happen, told you to pay escrow. You didn't do it and then still didn't comply with the escrow issue. You may have your reasons, but don't say you followed the direction of the court when you didn't and you know you haven't. I guess I should then, I try my best. You know I'm what, sorry. Mr. Kelly, I have listened to you all day. All right. Now is my turn. I do not want to be interrupted. So for the reasons, part of the reasons regarding your, as I've indicated, there are two things, you have, two problems you have to satisfy. One is 
you had good cause for not appearing. You have by no means established that, that you had any good cause whatsoever from appearing on that date. Now, you make it sound regarding your arrest on the bench war as though somehow or another you were manhandled, put in jail, locked in a cell, weighed up. Let's be real about what happened. You got locked up because there was a valid bench warrant out of 14A4 District Court. My, my court, but handled by another judge. That judge, as I told you, happened to be here that day. We took you into custody. I spoke with her to make a determination as to what to do. And one thing you never said about it, ever, because you're just trying to create sympathy, is you were released that same day told what your trial date was, told everything, and you were released without having to post. In fact, when you came back, I arranged you on the bench warrant and gave you the date to go appear for your driving while license suspended. So don't make it seem like somehow or another, this evil judge all of a sudden locked you up on a driving while license suspended and just left you sitting in jail and that because of that, you could barely get yourself out of jail and then appear for trial. That's not what happened. Do not interrupt. And then you sit here with these meritorious defenses or whatever you're trying to claim are defenses. I agree with plaintiff. You have not established any of those defenses, particularly the one you keep trying to harp on, which is a retaliate, retaliatory conviction. There's a predicate before you can even allege that. You've not a, ever, <laughs> you've not even gotten there. Nothing you've alleged is even close. So I don't, you don't even have to go through a further analysis of it. You haven't, you haven't started that type of action against the plaintiff. You've not stated it and haven't shown anything regarding that. The cold-hearted reality regarding the meritorious defenses is, and this is just the reality of how it works, the plaintiff would have to just show one, and it could lead to your termination of your tenancy. When you place yourself in this position, you have to show me a meritorious defense to all of their claims. You failed to do that. I, I honestly don't believe that you've established even one, but you certainly have not met or established any defense whatsoever to any of these claims. I'm done. You just haven't established. And so for those reasons, your motion your request, your motion to set aside the default judgment is denied. The court specifically finding that good cause nor meritorious defense has been established. The judgment will stand. The writ of restitution will issue because the writ of restitution is issued and there hasn't been a written answer filed to the, the motion to remove the uh, manufactured home and the time has passed. The court will also sign that order and grant that plaintiff's motion regarding that. I am. All my thank you. stuff's in there, Your Honor. All my daughter's stuff, the neighbor's stuff. I, and my equity in the home. I didn't. I want to say thank you that day. I did say thank you. It's on the record for you letting me go home that day. I was cop. I was very grateful for it. So. Your Honor, I believe I submitted um, proposed orders for both an order denying yes. attendance and a motion, and an order granting our motion. And I have signed that order. I have signed the writ, and I have signed your order regarding the removal of the Thank you. Your Honor. Are you kidding me? Oh my God. You have got to be kidding me. What? What is going on today? This is. This is a joke. This is a joke. Today is a joke. We need an interpreter. I need an interpreter when I cannot express myself sometimes. Oh my God! Sir, put that cigarette out. I don't give a crap that you are outside of your, this. What is wrong with everybody today? You know what, Miss Green? We're gonna start bringing people in person. He's gonna learn how to act in a courtroom. Can you hear it? Can you hear it, ma'am?